So Dan, you're here today on the on the F11. What's this is in the build up to the national championships. What is the reason for the F11? Uh, the reason is it's a fast course, I think. Uh, I hadn't originally planned on riding it, but I wanted my brothers to come here and do a ride because he's starting to get into the time trialing, but I'd uh, heard on the grapevine Harry had put himself in and uh, couldn't let him have a fast time, could I? <laughs> so, good opportunity to square up. It's the first time I've actually raced against Harry in the time trial, uh, which is mad considering how long we've been about the sport, so we've never squared up against each other. It's going to be uh, a fun race, that's for sure. And a very different course to what you the Nationals is going to be, which is the big goal? Yeah, massively. Uh, two weeks' time, that's that's where we've got to perform, but form's starting to come good, and it's nice just to try yourself out in a race scenario. It's, it's all good in training, but we pin a number on, suddenly it becomes a whole lot more. Uh, We're yeah. about 10 days out from the Nationals, something like that. It's, it's, um, How, where, where about to you and your form? Are you into a tape? When do you start your tapering? Uh, me, normally, I don't taper until a few days out, two, three days out. I never really have a massive training load. I'm not one of these uh, mile junkies, um, unlike Harry, who will happily pump out 20-hour weeks all year round. Uh, so for me, it's not too much an issue. I'm going to keep building now until next weekend and then probably start knocking it back a little bit. Had a bit of an off a few weeks back, so that, that kicked me back a bit, so I need to get back to where I was. And uh, you're, on, you're on the new Ribble... Ultra. Uh, Ultra TT bike, which you've had a, a, a hand in mm -hmm. to work on it? Yeah, so uh, we got our original prototype back in, I think it was December now, um, and I identified a few changes to both the mould, the cable routing, um, brake covers, lots of different areas that could be improved on it. So River went back to the drawing board on that, made some changes, made some developments, did quite a bit of CFD on different areas of the bike just to improve those. Uh, came back with a prototype which we had in... March, which was then signed off prior to Commonwealth Games, so both myself and John, uh, John had them out in Australia. Unfortunately, I didn't get to ride mine, but yeah, that's a different story. Uh, and then yeah, we've come back, and now the whole team are on them on the the final version. What's the difference? How much? Well, okay, what's the difference between a really good Aero TT bike and just a standard road bike? I mean. How much oh. difference can you gain? Oh, it's huge. If you went from, let's say, a road bike in a fairly typical position to a good position on a TT bike, a 30 mile an hour, 100, 120 watts. So in speed terms, that's huge. You're talking lumps of minutes over a 20, probably six, seven minutes over a 25, something like that. It's mad. <laughs> yeah. And so, and, and arrow wise then, where does the Rib Ultra fit in well um, so last year my CDA was pretty damn good on my Scott Plasma I'm sure people have sat and looked at and have managed to match with a CDA on the Ribble which is, is great for me so um, no deficit no change um, and I've got my position UCI legal as well so if anything that's a bit of an improvement so it sits up there right at the top end um, it comes down to integration of your position on each bike so some people might be slightly quicker on a different brand but if you're keen to, to trial and test then you'll definitely get yourself dialed in in a very quick position a little bit of banter between you and Harry with the <laughs> I'm yeah. at 62, that's a lot of, that's a big chain ring. What, yeah. what, why, what's the advantage of having such a big chain ring? Uh, it's threefold really, you get a straighter chain line, you have less chain tension and you have a bigger gear to push as well. So hopefully today we're going to be averaging 55k an hour, 56, so that's average. So when you're trucking down the straights you are doing close on 60k an hour. So at 100 RPM you need to have a pretty big gear to... to ride that um, I think Harry's on a 58 and he's been trying to get my spare 62 <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see how that one goes and it's not it looks slightly oval is it or not no that one isn't I, I run an oval on my inner for the road bike so I've done some testing to get my custom torque uh, position for the oval uh, with Mark at Pyramid um, so I've got that on my road bike for climbing so you sort of play to you get your peak angles from riding at 450 watts in your seated position and then set your oval accordingly oh, right. yeah. and you've also talking about Arrow and, and, and all that sort of stuff. You've been to the, the Boardman Performance Centre a few times. Mm -hmm. Just tell us, how important is such a centre? Oh, it's huge. It's going to revolutionise sort of the sport in the UK I think opening up aerodynamics to the public at a much more affordable level um, it's probably going to work out slightly cheaper than even uh, velodrome testing but also being able to combine that with the biomechanics and physiology in one location and it's not even one location it's basically one door between the two you jump out the tunnel you're in the biomech lab hop into the physiology and be able to tie all that together with the best minds in the UK it's yeah it's going to change it well, I've, I've done a tour as well and I've seen the wind tunnel and I've seen these two different labs what sort of things are you going to be able to gain from that sort of having that expertise 
on hand into one building? Uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of great minds in there to start with, with Barney Wainwright and Jamie Pringle and obviously Chris himself. Um, and there's a lot of good bike fitters, Bianca's there as well. So we, we're going to tap into those minds, but also just the facilities. There's a lot that they can measure. So in the biomechanics, not only have they got the actual biomechanical, um, all your different contact points, etc. You've got very high frequency, um, well, both torque and force in three axes at the pedals. You've got saddle pressure, frontal area, all these all these different measurements are all pulled in into one one location it's, it's pretty awesome and anyone wanting to see the performance center i think it's going to be featured in the tour de france coverage and yourself and chris are going to be in there <laughs> Yeah, we uh, just filmed a few days ago. Um, there's sort of six little pieces on aerodynamics in different areas, sort of time trialing, climbing, descending, that kind of thing. So I was the, the test monkey, as it were, in the tunnel, uh, looking at different things. So yeah, that'll be on the ITV coverage, but I think it's opening up. Well, I think it's even open now. Um, you can definitely get in the Biomec lab, and I think the tunnel's open in a few weeks. Now, a couple of weeks out from the Nationals, just tell us about the course that you know well, you know of it. You've known about it for a little while. Yeah, um, probably shouldn't have, but a few weeks, uh, probably three or four weeks ago, it came to my knowledge what the course was. Um, which is a bit of a shame it wasn't out in the public domain before that. Um, it's not really fair on other riders that aren't in the know, as it were. So um, it would have been good to, to get that out. But nonetheless, the course itself is quite, I say, rolling. <laughs> some uh, good old climbs on it. Uh, I think it's three different laps with some technical descents as well. And you don't really get to recover the speed that you put in from all those climbs. Uh, there's some tight right handers that are going to sap a lot of your speed out but um, it's going to be a nice course that's for sure yeah. and what's it between riding that and a, and a, and a, and a drag strip like this in terms of the weather, in terms of the mm. weather uh, much more variable so today we'll go out and probably sit an average 400 watts or so um, and literally try and flatline it for most areas you change your power a little bit whereas on that course it's going to be much much different you'll be up the climbs well over 400 watts uh, and on the descents coasting freewheeling um, so it's significantly variable so you normalise power probably 15 20 watts greater than your average whereas here should be about the same finally just talk us through the, the bike that you're going to be riding the Ribble Ultra mm -hmm. uh, 62 chain ring is that the size of the chain ring is that going to remain constant or will that change yeah that's going to stay the same I might look at a different cassette but so far from looking at the course I think it should be okay it shouldn't be any issues uh, we're not going up the steep climb it's more draggy so it shouldn't have a problem with that um, but I'll have a look and if I need to change that's not a problem we've got a full range of, of chain rings um, and everything else yeah we're pretty well set wheels and tyres of so Victoria Corsa speeds um, wheels got Walker with a tubeless yeah tubeless clinches yep Got the new Walker Brother Wide Boy rear disc, which has been testing really quick, so we're happy with that. Uh, USER and aero bars, um, just a few little tweaks here and there. My custom extensions that I'm sure a few people have seen here and there. <laughs> I should turn a few heads. So yeah, um, I think we're in a good place going into nationals. Some custom bits on it. Yeah, some custom bits here and there, but they're all available to, for purchase. If you go onto my website and have a look about, you can all get them on there. So yeah, within the UCI regulations, as it were. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you.